So in the last couple of years, petrol hedonism and everything I do with cars has given me the opportunity to travel, visit places like Atlanta and be with Ed Bolian in the Vinwicky chair, which is awesome. But also we like to travel and go to shows and visit our friends around the world. So from SEMA in Vegas in November 2022, uh, having been there last in 2019 before COVID, to visiting Tokyo, Japanese car scene is absolutely something since Tokyo Drift has absolutely blown my mind and I really want to go out there. So me and Scoot we booked up early part of 2022 to get out to do Tokyo Auto Salon and everything that happened from the moment we arrived in Tokyo blew our mind. But everything you could imagine it could possibly be, it was so much more. Josh Scoot is very well connected with photographers around, all around the world and Ken is one of his friends and Ken gave us some kind of like insights into what was happening because it's not only about Tokyo Auto Salon on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the show, which already as guests of Auto Finesse and Liberty Walk meant that we had kind of like one of the best illustrious kind of invites to the event and we'd be so close to all the action, including the unveiling of the new Liberty Walk F40, which drew the crowds from across the event. And I'll talk about that in a moment, but it's about everything that's happening around a show. Now you can imagine from everything you've seen, and if you do follow any of the Japanese car guys on social media, whether it's the uh, Boko, Bozozuka uh, cars, or whether it's the flashy light Lambos from Fighting Star and Anisia, or whether it's the JDM scene itself, you can go, go to Daikoku Car Park any morning or evening and there's cars turning up, rolling in and out, car clubs constantly turning up and just showing out and meeting up and being part of the car scene. But when Tokyo Auto Salon is going on, there's even more to see. So we arrive on the Thursday, 14 hour flight from the UK to Japan, but we land 7 a.m. It's an overnight flight, so we've had some good time sleeping on the flight, so we're all energized, ready to go. We've got the first thing lined up in our calendar is an RWB Porsche meet at a shrine in Tokyo. Now, call me naive, but I didn't realize this was going to be an hour and 10 minute taxi ride from our hotel to the shrine. I thought Tokyo was a little bit smaller than that, but it meant that we we're going to get a hire car the next day because we needed to get about. There's so many places we want to go as well as the auto salon. But we got to this shrine and it was like a who's who of global faces, names, YouTubers. For me, one, one of the most famous UK guys is the Kaiser. He was there with his entourage and Ken was there. But the RWB cast 13 RWBs in one place in, with a backdrop of the shrine. Uh, our friends at Auto Finesse were there as well. And it was just surreal. Hearing these cars start up and roll away as well, and just arriving, the people, the vibe, and it wasn't a huge meet. It was a real kind of invited select few that knew about this. And I believe it's an annual meet for the RWB, but it coincides with Tokyo Auto Salon. And that kind of just really set the tone for the rest of the week in Tokyo. Friday we went to Auto Salon, and that was absolutely everything we thought it could be and so much more we were as i said guests of liberty walk and they were unveiling their f40 so that in itself is one of those cars that for so many purists and ferrari f40 lovers just really polarized social media and we got to speak to toshi who's the ceo of liberty walk beforehand and he told us it'd been cha color changed for the unveil. Everything social media had seen up to that point was a red Ferrari F40 with a white dot. The body kit had been styled on it and so there was releases beforehand to tease everybody. Then he showed us on the other side, under the veil, that they actually had it prepped ready for Cato, the owner of Liberty Walk, to cut it live at the show before they unveiled the car. And then they would fit the uh, final part onto the car before the unveil. And we can't, this is getting very exciting. The unveil was planned for two o'clock, so we went for a good look around the show. And honestly, SEMA sets a level. SEMA is amazing. And I'm not comparing SEMA with Auto Salon. They're very different events. 
but the levels of Japanese builds, the attention to detail, the madness, the craziness, the weirdness. There's cars that are so customized that you don't actually even recognize what their original model was. And so across the whole show, and there's eight halls to enjoy, you never know what's on around the next corner. And obviously there's trades because the trades are what build the shows and sponsors. And uh, it was great to see uh, Ken Block's Audi Matron car that literally just filmed in uh, Vegas. That was there with an amazing tribute, which was really, really touching. Everywhere you went from the Japanese motorsport cars to the custom vehicles to the new Datsun 400Z Fair Lady, which seemed to be, for me, the car of the show because it it landed at Tokyo Auto Salon in so many different guises. One of the big misses of the show was the unveil of the facelifted Nissan GTR. Some people hoped it would be the R36. It was in fact the R35 with another look to it. And that was kind of really underwhelming. And I think social media said it best. It was extremely disappointed and not in any way different. Going back to two o'clock to the Liberty Walk stand and the crowds were starting to build up. And Scoot and I were back there early enough to be inside and we were welcomed into the um, like friends area and as we took our positions then even more friends arrived and now so everybody that had amassed 10 deep around the stand were a further six deep in with all the friends and people that had something to do with the vehicle build before we go to the unveil to the right of that was an astonishing Mercia Largo Liberty Walk body kit in full body on display and it just looked astonishing in primer grey, ready for a future build. And again, it doesn't look like any Mercy Largo I've ever seen before. So that's something that's really exciting to come. On the left was the RX-7 that they just built. And again, that was absolutely mind-blowing. The unveil was about to happen with the F40. And as the veil came off the F40, everybody saw the white F40 and everybody that is anybody again was there and this thing became the most famous F40 within minutes of its unveil. It was seen absolutely everywhere. Personally, love it. Personally, the Liberty Walk look on that car was amazing. Purists would say leave it alone, but then there's been modded F40s before that and there'll be modded F40s in the future as well. You know, there's over a thousand in the world, so He's put his own stamp on it and he made it work for what Liberty Walk is and what they do. That evening we went to, to grab a hire car just so we could get back about to Tokyo much easier. We went to Daikoku Parking. And this was, for me as an event organiser, was a poignant moment. Because up to that point, Tokyo taught us a few things. It's the cleanest place in the world. Everybody takes their trash home with them. Literally, there are no bins anywhere we would go into a Starbucks or a Burger King to put our rubbish in a bin because there are no public bins anywhere and there's no litter anywhere. People take their trash home. It's called respect and it's unreal. But this is where it translates into the car scene out there. We're at a Daikoku parking. There are roads swiveling all around it. Now, if we were in the UK, most people wouldn't even come into the car park or they'd come in maybe for five minutes, but the rest of the time they'd be popping and banging their exhausts in and around those roads because it resonates everywhere. These guys arriving in their beautiful cars from Koenig Ferraris to the original GTR Skylines to everything and anything in between arrive respectfully, whether it's a modified Lamborghini with a Gintani exhaust or whether it's a cool 1970s four banger with a great sound. They arrive in, they park up, there's no revving on the spot, it's just pure respect. If we had a facility like this in the UK, it wouldn't last more than a week or so purely because of the noise, the people sitting on the rev limiter in the car park or leaving in a cloud of dust. And we all kind of do it sometimes, but 
in Japan, the respect was amazing and it just worked and it just made it so conducive for it to continue to happen every morning, afternoon and night. So if you are ever in Tokyo, you have to go to Daikoku Car Park because you never know what you're going to see. And as I said, from Koenigs to original Skylines, um, one of my favorite, we saw RWB cars there turn up. We saw the Lamborghini Aventadors turn up with their flashing lights. The Diablos with the full uh, body kit by Anija. It was mind blowing. We spent the Friday evening there. We spent the mon uh, Sunday morning there as well. Two very different times, and again, two very different crowds of cars. And it just broke up the the event around Auto Salon. But the amount of respect that the people had for each other, for their cars, and the community was phenomenal. Japan, honestly, takes the car scene to a whole new level. It's very different. Being a Westerner, it's very difficult. Um, and it's so far removed from your everyday life. The language is a barrier, but the people are so respectful and helpful as well. So we felt really like welcome there. And if I could say to any petrol head watching, if you want to experience something different and you want to see and enjoy what you've seen in the movies, whether it's Tokyo Drift or Need for Speed or any, any of those great movies, you need to get yourselves to Tokyo. And Auto Salon every January is a great starting point. The simple lease from Premier Financial Services is the most powerful tool in the world of exotic car financing. You get all the benefits of a lease, like the tax preference as well as the low payments, plus the benefits of a traditional loan. You can build up equity, pay it off at any time, and along the way you'll know exactly where you stand with their easy to understand amortization table. Premier's amazing nationwide team is standing by and ready to help you own your dream car in a way that's easier and more affordable than you could ever imagine. Whether it's a vintage Porsche, a modern McLaren, or a multi-million dollar car collection, Premier is here to help. They've been supporting Vinwiki for the last six years and we certainly love them for that, but even more so, we love them because they make it easier and more affordable than you could imagine to own your dream car.